In this video, I'm going to show you how to create amazing t-shirt design graphics by using Midjourney, which you can then turn into fully fleshed t-shirt designs that you can sell on print on demand platforms. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you already know how to get started on Midjourney and how to use Discord, that sort of stuff. If you don't, if you're completely new to this tool, then make sure to check out one of my recent videos about how to create stickers with Midjourney, because there I'll show you how to get signed up and started for free with Midjourney. So the first prompt I'm going to show with you is actually really helpful and useful for creating animal themed t-shirt design graphics. It starts off with kawaii, cute, happy. I found that those adjectives are really useful for getting a nicer result with animals because if you leave them out you might get a dog that looks sad or very neutral and doesn't really evoke the right sort of emotions in t-shirt design. After that you want to write the animal so in my case, I'm going to go with dog and let's say wearing sunglasses. You could say wearing a hat, you could say wearing headphones or a certain type of outfit. Like you can really be creative here and sort of mix and match different topics. And by the way, I'm going to leave all of the prompts that I'm showing you in this video in the description as well, if you want to copy them and try them out for yourself. After that, I usually would put professional t-shirt design vector. Now there's different ways you can get this sort of t-shirt design feel. Um, but this is one way to do it. I'm going to show you some other ones afterwards. And then at the end, I like to add contour and white background. Both of those help with making it easier to cut out the designs afterwards because these are all JPEGs. They don't, they don't get generated as a PNG with a transparent background. So we typically have to remove the background and this part of the prompt makes it easier to do that afterwards. So before I hit enter, I like to just copy the entire prompt and that way we can quickly paste it in here a couple of times and because the more you sort of re-roll a prompt, the more usable results you're going to get. A lot of the graphics you generate might not be 100% right and or might not be usable for t-shirts. So it is definitely recommended to re-roll your prompts multiple times. It looks like there's quite a few usable graphics in this lot. So um, the one at the bottom right definitely looks usable and the background looks easy enough to cut out. Top left looks cool, bottom left looks cool. And I would recommend if you like some of the results that you get, to just use these buttons right here. So V1, V2, that stands for variations. And we're counting from top left to bottom right. So this is one, two, three, four. Essentially, if you wanted to re-roll option three right here and get some more variations of that design, you would have to click this button. And if you want to upscale, one of these results and get it in better quality, click U3 for upscale number three. And if you're not happy with any of your results, then you would have to just click this button right here with the arrows to rerun the entire prompt and get a different interpretation of it. That's it for the first one. Um, I think that already shows that the style is really suitable for t-shirts. Another prompt that I like to use, it starts with graphic t-shirt vector of a cute, happy dog. So we're using the same animal, same sort of adjectives. We're starting out with graphic t-shirt vector this time. Now I'm going to say wearing sunglasses again, detail design, colorful, then at the end, contour and white background again. Right here, we've got the next set of results. These definitely have a different style, which is quite obvious to tell, but once again, very interesting and definitely usable for t-shirts. I do like the top left result and that also looks fairly easy to cut out. I think the top right is quite neat and usable. These ones have actual sort of t-shirt mock-ups within them, which does make it harder to cut them out. That does happen sometimes, unfortunately, and this set of results also does look really neat. So the colorful word right here in this prompt, as you can see, makes the results very vibrant and definitely Definitely very eye-catching. So the next couple of prompts I'm going to show you are more for sort of hobby themed t-shirts and not necessarily animals, but they definitely have a really cool style and can save you a ton of time. So the first one I wanted to show you is cruise ship in front of a vintage sunset t-shirt design vector graphic. Now in this case, we've got vintage in here quite a bit because I want to get that different style and that would suit a cruise ship niche more likely. Detail design, contour and white background again. So let's copy this prompt and then enter it a few times right here into Discord and see what the tool comes back with. Meanwhile, some of our dog artwork has been upscaled. These definitely look really cool 
and would be very usable for t-shirts if we remove the background and some of this stuff that's just floating around. Right, some of our cruise ship graphics have been created and they do definitely look really, really neat. So you can kind of see right there that it has that vintage sunset style, but it's also quite detailed, which is nice. And I could definitely see some of these working in cruise ship or travel designs. Um, or just generally for people who like ships and obviously with this prompt again it's in the description and you could easily just well take out cruise ship and put in other vehicles into this prompt that then will be placed in front of a vintage sunset um, you don't even have to use a vehicle maybe you could just start off with vintage sunset and then you can place your own graphics or silhouettes in front of the design that mid journey comes up with if you wanted to affect the colors a bit by the way because all of these look very orangey and red you could also just add a few colors into your prompt like for example turquoise and pink and here we are. This is some cruise ship graphics with a vintage sunset, but in different color schemes this time. And I also did a variation without the cruise ship. And as you can see, some of these are very usable for more generic t-shirt designs, or you can also place your own graphics on top of them. So the last prompt I'm going to share with you has got a really, really unique and vibrant style, and it also works quite well for vehicle themed niches or hobby themed stuff. So um, this one starts off with action shot to make it more interesting. <laughs> of a motorbike and once again you could use different vehicles rather than just motorbike synth wave which sort of dictates the style and it is a really cool style t-shirt vector enclosed in a circle which by the way is also another helpful piece of text which often forces mid journey to create the design in a circular style and that makes it easier afterwards to well first of all remove the background and to use the text around the circle and create a more sort of symmetric layout sunset contour and white background at the end and i'm also going to create some variations of this for monster trucks and here we go this is what some of the monster trucks look like definitely a really cool style and uh, would pop and stand out very well on a t-shirt this is some of the motorbikes um, i could see us using maybe the bottom right option right here the top left very nice sort of flying through the air and the lighting looks really cool sometimes you might get some funky results here but if that happens just rerun the prompt or maybe just create variations of one of the designs that looks closest to what you were imagining and once you've finished upscaling the results that you like the most a quick tip to download them very quickly is heading to your profile on mid journey where you can then click upscales right here and then you can click on this little symbol in the top right corner and select all of the ones you want to download like so and then you can simply open the downloader right here and then click download all as a zip file so this is a free website i've been using to upscale my images it will be linked down below in the description you have to just scroll down a little bit and then drag and drop your image files into here you can only do one at a time unfortunately which is a bit annoying but once you've dropped it in here you can select the scale i like to do about six times as big as the original and then hit submit and then it will upload your file and increase the quality very quickly and once that's done you can just right click onto the image on the right which is the higher quality one and then save image as. Once you're inside of Photoshop and you've opened up your AI file, one way to quickly remove the background is using the magic wand tool. Now you have to play around with the tolerance right here because uh, for some designs the tolerance will have to be higher, for some will have to be lower and I would recommend using contagious as well because that will basically help you not erase parts of your actual design and only the background. So let's click onto the white background with the magic wand. As you can see it is selected of the white around the dog. Now all you have to do is head up to select and hit inverse right here and then go to your layers panel and click the add layer mask symbol right here. As you can see there's still a few objects that are sort of floating around the dog. You could leave them there if you wanted to. Let's just add a background color so we can see what's going on. You could leave them there technically. They do look quite cool but oftentimes with AI artwork they're sort of random objects that you might actually want to delete and to do that you want to sort of click on the layer mask in your layers panel and then paint over these objects with a black color selected and that's how you paint the mask in and sort of delete unwanted objects. You are going to have to do some retouching with most of the t-shirt designs because for example this right here does not look very good. One way to do that in this case is creating a new layer right here and then you could use the spot healing brush and sort of paint 
over the areas that are unwanted and in most cases it's going to do a decent job of taking them away it won't always work but it's definitely worth giving a try so this was a fairly easy graphic to delete the background from now you've got it essentially ready if you group these two essentially ready to move it around and we'll obviously add some text to this let's quickly create a tissue design for this dog graphic So here we go, this is a quick little dog dad design. Obviously there's way more things you can do with this graphic, but just to give you an idea of what you could do. But you might be wondering, what do you do if you have a more complex graphic like this? This is one of the synth wave prompts that I showed you earlier. Here we've obviously got a lot of objects, even if we cut out the background with a magic wand, it will look quite messy. So I'm going to walk you through this as well, essentially show you my process for making these graphics more usable. So using the magic wand, again, we're clicking onto the background, and you can see straight away that it's selecting a lot of the graphic which we want to keep right here so in this case you would have to turn down the tolerance let's turn it down to 20 maybe see what happens and that looks a bit better so it is mainly going around this entire design let's go to select inverse and click add a layer mask at the bottom and now we can see this is still pretty horrible so <laughs> to tidy this up a bit one quick tip i would give you first of all select the layer mask in the layers panel and then up here it says select and mask that's a very useful function because if we zoom into one of these areas you can see how sort of rough and jagged the edge of this mask looks first of all we're going to change the smooth slider and turn that up quite a lot then contrast same thing there turn that up very much and shift edge we're going to turn down quite a bit so about minus 60 percent and that will take a little while to load and as you can see it has smoothed out the edge here and made it look less rough. So if we hit OK now and go between the before and after, you can see it's already gotten rid of a lot of these fuzzy bits, which would definitely look terrible once they are printed. Now the next step is going to be actually painting in some of these areas right here. You have to work with different background colors essentially to see the design better. But let's paint in some of these areas that have been cut out with a magic wand. For that, once again, you have to have the mask selected. You have to use the brush tool with B or you can find it here in the layers panel and with the white fill color selected you have to paint over these areas to release the mask like so and now if you hit X it's going to swap your colors around so you can delete the unwanted object so just swap between white and black right here with X on your keyboard and essentially um, paint in or paint out various areas so let's get rid of these extra bits right here and a quick tip for the bottom here hold down shift on your keyboard click and then go across to the right to the other side while holding down shift and then click again as you can see it's going to draw a straight line with the brush so if i reverse that um, you could set it here shift click or hold down shift and click again to draw a straight line and that's just going to tidy it up a lot quicker and make the space at the bottom more usable for text or easier to place text there. If you want to learn another way to make extra passive income with Midjourney, then make sure to check out this video next where I show you how to create amazing sticker designs for print on demand.